Hi, I'm Daniel Zengel with PRP Labs here with Don Lipscomb, and we are going to talk briefly about platelet-rich fibrin. So I know most of the time we're talking about PRP, platelet-rich plasma. A lot of people are less familiar with PRF. Um, so Don, first of all, what is fibrin? So fibrin is a protein that's found circulating in blood and upon activation, say through platelets be becoming activated, it forms these long strands. And these strands basically clump together to form a net. Mm -hmm. And then so this net can uh, serve as a structural basis for a clot. Right. And then the, this net also allows uh, other cells to be captured in it. Uh, say for instance, endothelial cells, if you have a wound on mm -hmm. your skin. However, uh, these long strands of fibrin can also uh, get trapped on red blood cells and can also trap platelets. So that's why it's very important to distinguish how your PRP is made because of the fibrin, for instance, can actually throw off the final platelet count. Right. Yeah, and, and so that's, we really see two distinct forms of uh, platelet preparation. And one is to make PRP, which is really like a liquid injectable mm -hmm. serum and then platelet rich fibrin as you mentioned it's it's got these fibrin proteins that are sort of uh, clotting mm -hmm. um, and and platelet rich fibrin is essentially a, a clotted or coagulated PRP is, is really exactly my and this might be useful for something like you know dry socket applications yes, absolutely exactly. yeah and mm -hmm. we see that too so a lot of uh, in dental work if they're doing a molar extraction and they want to apply uh, platelet-rich plasma, they'll activate it typically to turn it into PRF uh, so that they can use that gel-like substance and put it right there in the dry mm -hmm. sockets. Um, now, platelet-rich fibrin would be less useful for like a knee injection or something because it's it's already clotted. You can't exactly. put it into a syringe. Exactly. I don't even think it would be injectable at that right. point. Right. Yeah. It might not be safe even if no. it was <laughs> to inject a giant clot. So different uses for different types of PRP. Absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, and um, and it's you know it's up to the clinician again the steps that they take to produce PRF. It, it requires typically activating the uh, PRP, and the, and uh, they usually use calcium chloride or mm -hmm. bovine thrombin or autologous th thrombin too. Uh, right, autologous yeah. thrombin as well. Yeah. So um, yeah, there's different preparation methods. It definitely requires much more sterile procedures. With PRP, you're essentially just doing injections using you know injection ports on tubes uh, with platelet rich fibrin you actually need to take out the clot from the tube and uh, usually using surgical scissors or scalpel they'll cut off the red blood cells from the clot and then they will put that clot on the wound site or surgical site um, so i'm sure you can imagine there's a lot more like open air um, so you need like a laminar flow hood you need very sterile procedures to be able to successfully and safely apply platelet-rich fibrin. Exactly. All right. Well, thanks, Don, uh, for covering PRF with me. Uh, we got some more videos on platelet-rich plasma coming right up.